Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano and in this short video we are going to be working through group five of a dozen a day blue book chapter five. This is a fun one we get to do lots of different positions in this last chapter and so walking up a hill we've had this walking figure before five finger pattern but if you scan the piece you're going to notice a lot more sharps and flats in this and that's because we're working through different five finger patterns. So we're changing our dough every two measures. The major five finger scale formula is whole step between do and re, whole step between re and mi, half step between mi and fa, and whole step between fa and so. And that formula of whole, whole, half, whole gives you a major scale. But if we have a different starting note, the scale is going to look different. So let's say we're putting Do as D, whole step. Now we have a whole step between Re and Mi, so we've got to skip this white key and play a black key, and so forth. So if you notice in measures three and four, we have that sharp. And then in measures five and six, there's two sharps because we've got whole step, whole step, half, and then in the next line, we don't have any sharps, but we have a flat. We've got a whole step, whole step, half step, and then whole step. We have to call that one a flat because F, G, A, it has to be a B, so it's a B flat. More on that later. But exercise one in short is major five finger patterns, starting with C, moving up until we reach G. So we're going to start with our nice hand position, gentle bounces on the quarter notes, gentle roll-ups on the half notes. Here we go. Do, re, mi, fa, so, C chord. Now we're going to change Do to D, sharp on the third note. Now Do is going to be E. We have two black keys in this one. So C and E, Do and Mi, fourth finger, the right hand. And then we've got this little grace note. I call it the ta-da, ta-da. So you have that little teeny note you're just going to play really quickly before you play those full notes together. So let's do that one one more time. Again, we're changing the Do or the first note in the scale every two measures. So we've got to change the rest of the fingers to make sure that we have that combination of whole, whole, half, whole. It's not always going to be white. Here we go. Exercise two, same concept. Now we're just doing, instead of the scales, we're doing the chords. So do, mi, so. How do the do, mi, so's change as we change the do moving up the piano keyboard? And again, with the deep breaths, we're going to have a gentle roll up on those dotted half notes, those three count notes. Here we go. Exercise three, running up a hill. We are just going to go twice as fast as we did walking up a hill. But the do's are going to change just as we did in exercises one and two. Do with C, do with D, and so forth. So incorporate your rolls. This is going to be played a little bit more on the tips. Do is D. So black key in the middle. Do is E, two black. 
black keys. Do is F one black key. Do is G all white. Left hand thumb scoots up. Exercise four, skipping up a hill. So we've got our do, mi, so, mi, do, with do's changing every two measures. Here we go. Exercise five, cartwheels up a hill. Again, we're switching our do every measure, so we're getting used to what the major chords sound like from C to G and what they feel like, which ones are flat and which ones have a me that is on a black key. Again, remember these triplets have a faster feel to them, so we've got to make sure the crossover is equal to two sets of triplets. So here we go. One and a two. Do is D, black key in the middle for that one, and a three, and a E, black key for me, and a four, and a F is all white, and a four, G is all white, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a Exercise six, jumping up a hill. So this one, same concept. We've got our major chords moving up or to the right on the piano keyboard. Some are gonna have black keys in the middle and some are not. And the little slurs between beat three and four are gonna be down, up. So it's gonna to be touch, touch, down, up, move, touch, touch, down. Exercise seven, we are taking a break from all of the major chords. We're gonna stay here now in a C major chord, Do, Mi, So. And this one is going to be an exercise in a drop lift. So you see that sideways V, that's an accent. And that means you're gonna play the note a little bit louder and then followed by a staccato note with that curved line joining them together. So it's gonna be down, up, Just lift up, one, two, three, four. You don't have to make it staccato, just pass through the note on the way up. seven boxing from the side view I just want you to see the down up motion of these two note slurs we've got we're grabbing three and five the outsides of the chords right hand it's so and me left hand it's do and me so it's going to be down up down up down up down up or drop lift drop lift let's get really loose motion drop lift drop lift try to make sure those thirds sound Exercise eight, spinning a big top, getting used to the triplet figure in a major chord, the do, mi, so. So you're gonna be passing through that. There's a couple ways you could do it. You can roll like this, circle going this way, or you can roll this way. I'll also have a side view of this one. Here we go. One and a two. to mention.
mentioned the five with a little one means you're going to switch your fingers silently. So it's, instead of going like this, you're going to go five, one, and make that a little smooth. Now this time, we're going to lift both of our hands kind of up this way. alternate way you can roll your wrists up. So I like to think of this one as it's going this way. So look at my wrist as I do this one. I'm dropping on my thumb. However, the left hand can't go so high at the beginning. Otherwise, your short thumb is poking that. So the whereas the right hand is drop, stand, up, drop, stand. The left hand is going to be stay there, up, stay there, up. So it will look a little bit different in terms of the angle. Right goes pretty high. Together. Here's exercise nine, rolling a hoop. This is a fun one. So we have so in the left hand, and then we're just going through our major chord, do, mi, so. And the trick to this one, there's a couple of things. We are splitting the triplet in the first beat between the left hand and the right hand. So one and do. It's not gonna be one. It's gonna be even. And the other thing you wanna watch, you don't hold on to your right hand thumb when it gets done on the way down. So don't go, but get off of it. So. One and a two and lift, one and a two and a one and a two and a three and a four and a make sure that you have the right amount subdivisions, one and a two and a three and a four and a. Exercise nine, I wanted you to see this from the side view so you see the thumb in the right hand is releasing, the thumb's not going to hang down, so it's it's suspended. It's kind of like it's going this way a little bit. Like you're pushing off your pinky. So exercise 10 is an exercise in double thirds, playing these together so we're going to really try to play them at the same time when we switch from the five three to the three one from measure one to measure two we're going to lift the third finger up just at the very last second to make it smooth so you're going to go like this five three then lift then it'll sound nice and smooth versus this and this here we go Lift at the last second. One, two, three, four. Same thing with the left hand. One, two, lift that three. Two, three, four. Four, lift a three. Lift the three right before. Okay, side view from this, what I want you to see is I want you to see that third finger lifting up so that you can make it legato between measures one and two. So here we go. So roll, roll, roll. Third finger is going to lift up at the last second. One, two, three, four. Here's the left hand. Same thing. Third finger lifts up to reset so it can play with the fifth finger. Here's exercise 11, writing piggyback. You see these curved lines between beat two and four with LH underneath them. That means the right hand's gonna play beat one and beat three stems up, and then the left hand's gonna play beat two and four, and it's writing piggyback literally right over your right hand. So it's gonna be playing D sharp and F sharp. So your hands will be right on top of each other for this one. So we have right, left, right, left, one, two, three, four, 
to left hand pinky plays that C. One, two, hold the chord. Here's exercise 11, side view. So literally this is piggyback. Right hand has a nice hand position. Left hand's just on top of that with fingers two and four. Lots of passages in music will have your hands doing something like this, by the way. So. Here's exercise 12, fit as a fiddle and ready to go. Lots of things in this one, scale passages, five, seven chord. Remember, we're gonna scoot that left hand pinky down a step from the C chord and passing through the chord tones. A few eighth notes in there to make the rhythm fun. So here we go, one, two, three. watching this short tutorial on Dozen a Day Blue Book. This was chapter five or group five. I hope that you found it helpful and I hope you will subscribe to my channel for more videos on piano technique, piano literature, and also quick piano tips. Thanks again for watching.